Mr. Lorimer. Glad to see you back home. Well, glad to see you, Olaf. Any good news? What then? That's good news. Real good news. Let me get my axe and I am ready to cut them down. <laughs> Just when I was winning, That's too. That's one man's opinion. <laughs> Playing checkers, eh? Uh, a fine example for the boss's daughter to set. No more of that, Perry. You've got to get back to work now. You finally got the order. Yes, the biggest we've ever tackled. A national defense order for the H&L Lumber Company. Well, congratulations, boss. Now you're the general manager of something worth managing. How big is it? Ten million feet. Oh, boy, will it be good to get back to work again. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working in the redwood all my long lived days. I've been working in the redwood just to pass the time. All right, Jones. You're on. I'm afraid you're too heavy. Too heavy? For a cook who has been eating his own grub? Oh, so you're a cook, eh? Yes, a good one. Well, that's different. Have you... Are you a citizen? So I got my paper over here. Well, good. Come in. Oh, hello, Mason. Mr. Larmer. Get in line. I'll save a job for you. All right, Mr. Larmer, but it better be the foreman's job. That's the one I'm after. <laughs> I like your ambition. Shame. <laughs> He's got what it takes, Frank. Sign him on as boss logger. Here's your cook. Your name? My name? Oh, yes, uh, uh, Eric Smith. Did you say Smith? Yes, sir. Citizen? Yes, sir. Democrat. All right. Start tomorrow morning. Thank you, sir. And uh, I beg your pardon. Well, what is it? I have my own assistant. Nice boy. Is he a citizen, too? Yes, sir. Also Democrat. <laughs> Bring him along. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Are you sure you're not making a mistake there? Mr. Lorimer hired him. He's a pretty good judge of men. Well, his name ain't Smith, and he ain't the right kind of a guy I'd like to have around this camp. You're hired. Dad, Mr. Adams is here to see you. Oh, all right. Uh, sorry, boys. I'll be back in a little while. Excuse me. Frank, you come with me. Signed and sealed by the government. Lorimer, this is the first time I ever endorsed a contract without first looking up the customer's credit ratings. I knew we could count on Mr. Adams. Providing, of course, I have your partner's signature to the note. Well, that's not possible, Mr. Adams. You know, John Hamilton died last year. 
But as administrator of this estate, I have the legal authority to sign for the partnership. In that case, I'll finance it, if it isn't too much. We won't need much. We're cutting our timber right here in Antler Valley. What? You know the history of Antler Valley. Half a dozen big companies have tried to log it in the last 20 years. Yes, but the squatters ran them out to save their hunting and trapping. They won't get rid of Dad so easy. I won't let them. This is our last chance to get the H&L Lumber Company back on its feet. And fight or no fight, we'll do it and save money. You see, Mr. The outfits that failed build a logging railroad through the valley. It won't take very much to put it back into operating condition. And that's why we turned this deserted camp into our offices. Well, I suppose you know best. Like it might be broken. Looks like Mr. Adams was right about the hunters and trappers up here. By jumping Jiminy. Wait till I get my hand on them fellows who trap and shoot lumberjack down here. You attend to him. We'll attend to the squatters. Come on, Frank. You fellas help all of Be careful, boys. He broke in his legs. Oh, oh, oh. Listen, Kane. When I came in here, I warned you to let my men alone. You're not going to cripple any more. We ain't had nothing to do with your men. You expect me to believe that? When you've been bragging about running other lumbermen out of here? They were not cutting timber for national defense. What if this country needs Zantla Valley? I reckon we can find hunting and trapping somewhere else. Good. We'll be in here in about three days. Oh, yeah? Well, there's some squatters' rights in this valley. Oh, I'll pay for your cabins. You can keep your dirty money, Mr. High and Mighty. If anybody's going to get out of the valley, it'll be you. Now get out. Go on, get out. <coughs> hey, get on out of here. Where you think those who think we know what our rights is? Go on, get out of here. Don't the wheel wheel this off. Come on, get on your old horse and road. You think we care what... No, I won't even give you three days. The sheriff will be here by sundown. And if you're not out of here by then, you can rot in jail. Come on, Hatton. Of our men. Well, not yet, but I could be persuaded. Could you really? I don't see anything wrong with your eyes. Ah, that's because you're looking from the out in. You should be looking from the inside out like I am. Why, it's terrible. Oh, it's wonderful. I keep seeing things. What kind of things? Well, for instance, when I open my eyes, I see a beautiful vision. She has gorgeous blonde hair. Her eyes are shimmering pools of blue. Her lips are like wild strawberries, while her skin is like a double vanilla malt. With an egg in it? Yeah. No. 
No kidding. She's the most perfect vision of feminine bulkitude I've ever seen. Is that all? Well, that's all I actually see, but I... I could use my imagination and go on. No, that's enough. I've already made my diagnosis of the case. Oh, you have? Yes. You not only suffer from optical illusions, but you also have a badly inflated ego, a severe case of unadulterated gall, and a fatal and distasteful personality. Think I'll live? I hope not. But if it's absolutely necessary, do it someplace else. What are you doing around here anyway? Uh, I'm looking for the office. I understand they need men. Well, they do want men. If you know of any, they can apply at the employment agency down the road. Lady, when they get me, they won't need any more. I'm a whole crew by myself. Now I know who you are. Oh, you do? Sure. You're that famous character all the kids are talking about. Superman. Oh, you underestimate me. I'm John Gordon. Adventurer, explorer, and the best lumberjack in the country. Lumberjack? <laughs> Closest you ever got to war is reading a pulp magazine. I'll ignore that. Oh, I'm in my element here. I love the wide open spaces, the stately trees, the beautiful limbs. Uh, 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 don't coax me. I can't stay a minute longer. I have to get that job, you know, so we can get better acquainted. No kidding. You've got my blood pressure up to 140. What do you advise me to do? If it reaches 150, sell. When am I going to see you again? If you ever see me again, it'll be an accident. Uh, 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 don't get over anxious. more a lumberjack than I'm a milkmaid. Do you suppose he's an investigator from the insurance company? He might be a detective. There's a good many wanted men in lumber camps. Dad, you didn't answer me. What do you make of this four-flusher? Oh, he's looking for a job, all right. <laughs> you wouldn't say so if you'd seen him. I did see him. And I hired him. What? You mean you took on a green hand when we need capable, trustworthy men? I've learned never to judge men by their appearances, Barnes. Turned out to be quite a marriage. Now that I have got a wife, this old song just fits my life as I trot behind the baby carriage. I'll keep rolling my own. I'll keep rolling my own. You all know a city guy and a fancy sort of stuff you try. As long as I've the makings, why? I'll keep rolling my own. <laughs> I once met a girl way up in Butte, and she was young and kind of cute. And as I danced with her, she kept on drinking. She said, you have lovely eyes, but I know they're paralyzed. So I said, without as much as winking. Oh, I'll keep going my own. I'll keep going my own. You all know a city guy and a fancy sort of stuff you'll try. As long as I'm the making fly, I'll keep rolling my own. Hey, newcomer. It's your turn to put wood in fire. Okay, bud.
Don't you think you would be able to pick up a little piece of firewood, eh? <laughs> so that's the way you're going to handle timber and job tomorrow, eh? <laughs> Press you down. What do you bet? Five dollars against that pair of socks you're knitting. By jumping Jiminy, that's the bet. But let me tell you something. There is only one man in a thousand who can put down Ulu Svensson. Put down your knitting, Grandma, and meet the man. You betcha. Hey! Hey, Jasmine! A glad hand greeter, gents, 25 cents at all the novelty stores. Pretty cheap for a pair of homemade socks, huh? <laughs> yeah. What's the sharpshooter doing in camp? I'm a new hand, and you? Me? I'm your boss. Shake. And that's to let you know it. Hey, you've been hurting him. Ah, he can take it. A fine way to fix a guy up for a good day's work tomorrow, you. There's a forest fire! Fire? Oh, yeah. All right, man. Everybody out. Hurry up. It's headed this way. You go tell Arm, all right? Let right. you men get your axe and shovel. Get up on the fire. Hurry up! Slow him. Take it snappy. Slow him. Slow him. Forest fire! Where? Right over here! That looks bad. I've seen worse. How can we stop it? We can backfire. Turn it toward the lake. But can we stop it? We've got to. If we don't, we lose the whole valley, the camp, and everything. Take care of it sooner. Well, I didn't want to bother you until after the 
I understand. We must go on, you know. Dad would have wanted it that way. That's right. You still are the operating head of the H and L Lumber Company, aren't you? Yes, I am. If I can hold on to it. Doesn't the H stand for some sort of partnership? It did until Mr. Hamilton died. Since then, it stood for a family back east, writing to know why they're not getting money from Dad. There. Come back tomorrow and let me check on it. Thanks. Gosh, I sure got all wrapped up in my work, didn't I? Pardon me, sir. What is it, Mr. Barton? We left the town. What's the matter? The men are all worked up over your father's debt. They are going to take the law with their own hands and go off to the squatters. You'd better phone the sheriff, so I'll try to stop the men. Wait a minute, ma'am. You mustn't try to square up for Dad. It'll only lead to more trouble. You can't fight all the backwoodsmen in this valley. You bet you my life. One at a time, I can. You'll only get yourself in trouble, in jail. Get me the sheriff at Green Bluff, and please hurry. If my father really meant so much to you, go back to work. Finish up the job that meant so much to him. We've got to finish up those squatters or there won't be any job, Miss Perry. There will always be a job. The most important job in the world to every one of us. Oh. That's too bad. Well, thank you, Sheriff. Our forefathers fought and gained liberty for all. But it didn't end there. They knew each generation would take up the fight where the other left off. And now it's up to our generation. Up to you, ma'am. Our government has given us this contract to deliver lumber to them at the date specified. They must have it then because it is needed. Needed for your protection. So let's stick to our job, ma'am. The big job. Don't let anything sidetrack us. Let's go to work. What do you say? What about squatters? You won't have to worry about them anymore, men. The sheriff just told me the Kane family perished in the fire. All right, men. Let's go back. Don't you, Perry? Good morning, Miss Larmer. Good morning. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mr. Adams came out to express his sympathy. Not only in words, but in a practical way. I see you've been doing some figuring already, and I know the results are discouraging. I'm afraid you inherited a liability here instead of an asset. In fact, <laughs> the saddest lumber deal I ever financed. And you want to know how you're going to get your money back? Well, Mr. Adams, you lent it to a firm which is still in business. My dear girl, you misunderstand me entirely. Of course I'll live up to my agreement and finance your company, if you want the money. If I want it? Well, how else can I go ahead with our contract? But you don't need to take on that responsibility, Perry. Mr. Adams has very kindly offered to relieve you of it. Yes. And although it entails a loss, I'll pay you a fair sum for your interest. Enough to start you on something more suitable. But this is the only business I know. Of course, it seems ridiculous for a girl to run a lumber company. And I do appreciate your kindness. But I'd be giving up the only chance I have to accomplish what my father started. She's your father's daughter, all right. But aren't you showing more courage than judgment? Why, the squatters will burn this valley out before they let you log it. They're gone for good. They lost their lives in the fire. Do you suspect anybody? I don't know. Every man here was hired by my father. And yet I have the feeling that someone in this camp is responsible for all that happened. Had a trying time, Miss Larimer. I hope it's all over. I'll back you financially as I agreed. Of course, if you don't meet your contract, I'll have to step in to protect my investment. But from now on, I hope you have clear sailing. Well, thank you, Mr. Adams. Anything I can do for you, let me know. Right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. 
nice of him to make that offer. Do you think I made a mistake? I don't think. I only work here. Oh, I see. You don't want to discourage me. Isn't that stack of bills and debts discouragement enough? No, they're a challenge. The thing that bothers me is there's someone in this camp I can't trust. Well, it's impossible to fire the whole camp and get a new crew. We can't lose a single day if we're to meet our obligation. Mrs. Perry, your lunch is ready. Shall I bring him in? Oh, no, thank you, Eric. I'll be right over. Very well. I hate to see you worry like this, Perry. You know how I feel about you. Why don't you marry me and let me take this responsibility from your shoulders? I never thought about you that way, Frank. Well, then, please think it over. I promise to do all I can to make you happy. Thank you. I, I will. Will you have lunch with me? No, thank you. I've got to get back on the job now. I uh, need some things I brought back from town. Nitric acid. We'll take these along and turn them over to the sheriff. Is Miss Larmer going with you? Yes. He wants a thorough investigation by the authorities. The sheriff will likely come back here with us. And none of you men are to leave camp until he gets here. Understand? Well, has anybody got anything to say? Why doesn't somebody speak up and say something? Okay, you get the chariot. We'll be waiting right here. You see that you are. Fellas, we all looked in together. And by yumping Jiminy, nobody is getting out before he proven himself being on the level. What Olaf means is we're going to have our own investigation. We're going to search every bunk and every bindle for incriminating evidence. But what evidence? What, uh, what do you expect to find? How do we know until we find it? Whoever has been terrorizing this camp must be doing it for a reason. If it's for money, we might find some bills tucked away in a bunk. If there's another motive, a man's private papers might show it. You know, it's against the law to search a man without a warrant. A logging camp makes its own laws. Well, I'll be the first. Search me, Olaf. Go on, I've got nothing to hide. Not much to show, either. You search my bunk, Mason. Maybe you'll have better luck, but I doubt it. Well, we'll see about that. Well, there's nothing there. You're next, Olaf. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't do that, answer ticklish. All right, pull out your own pockets. <laughs> yeah, sure. Two bucks and about all the coupons that ever came to camp. What do you do with these, Olaf? <laughs> I send them back to the old country, to my father. He thinks it's the American dollar. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Do you ever try to spend them? Ah, uh, you don't know me, old man. He's a funny duck. He never spent any money. He took to be in a mattress. <laughs> What's this? Hi. That's something I've been saving for you, Gordon. For me? You betcha. Well. Well, thanks. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Well, who would have thought it? A ladies' man in camp. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never hear the last of this. Don't worry, Casanova. You'll have plenty on the rest by the time this is over. Okay, Red. Who's next? Wife and five kids. Jumping Jiminy. What a man. Five kids? What part of Canada did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Olaf. Search his bunk. You betcha. Only a bottle of whiskey. All right, Denver. <laughs> Jumping, Jiminy. Uh, liniment. <laughs> All right, Gordon. Search his bunks, okay? Oh, no. You won't search my bunk. This was your idea, Gordon. So you can learn all about the business of every man in a camp. What do we know about you? Nothing. What do you want to know about me? All right. Why you try to pass for a lumberjack when you've never done a day's work in your life? That happens to be my own business. What is in my bunk happens to be my business. Oh, so there is something you're hiding. I have nothing to hide. I have not been sabotaged. That's just what we want to find out. Please, please, don't search in my bunk. Come on, please, get please. away from there. Ah! Don't hurt him, Mason. I'll handle this. You search the bunk. I've had a hunch about him. What do they say? Uh, it's written in a foreign language. Maybe I can read it. Uh, it isn't Swedish. But I think I can make this out. This uh, is a picture of his wife and children, I guess. They were important people in the old country. About 10 years ago, a new government came into power. Eric had to flee for his life. We've been wrong, boys. Eric's a very decent sort of fellow. The sort we need around here. But by jumping Jiminy, he, he must have been scared of something. When I came to this country, I was marked for debt. So I took my citizenship under the false name. Don't let me deport it. Don't send me back to be killed. All we care about is clearing up these accidents and nothing else. Isn't that right, Mason? Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Forget it. Forget it. Let's get on with the search so we won't have to show our personal belongings when the sheriff gets here. Yeah. I reckon I'm next. Eric, you can search my bunk. That'll make us even, eh? Well, Sheriff, you finish your investigation? Yes, for the present. What did you learn? Nothing. Usually, on a case of this kind, there is at least one man who will rat on the others. But that crew of yours are closer than brothers. Yes. They're all sharing the same danger. Maybe we ought to discharge all of them. I thought of that before, Perry. But we can't get men. No lumberjack will go to work in a hard luck camp. You'd better be glad your men are game enough to stick to the job. And don't worry. Whoever it is behind this will think twice before he causes another accident. 
That crew out there would tear a man limb from limb for even being careless. Good to hear you say that, Sheriff. Because if everything goes well, we'll get our logs down to the mill just in time. speaking. We've just lost our whole supply of dynamite. How soon can you rush a couple of cases to us? Too late. We've got a landslide to move off our railroad. Oh, tomorrow morning? That's better. And there's nothing we can do till it gets here? Nothing. We've got the dirt and logs off already, but only dynamite will move those big boulders. But we've got to get the logs down to the mill inside our time limit or we'll lose everything. That makes it doubly important to get to the bottom of this thing right now. Get Gordon in here again. I want to see if he can tell the same story a second time. What happened today proves one thing, fellas. Our mysterious friend is out to break the H&L Lumber Company. How do you figure that? If he'd waited a minute longer to fire that shot, I wouldn't be here. So he's not a crazy murderer killing at random like we thought. Yes, when that is eliminated, remain only one reason to make a delay. So, Mr. Perry will lose her business. Would you recognize the man who rode away if you see him again? No, no, I haven't a scrap of evidence. But I'm going to pull a bluff. I'm going to let the camp think I have. And whoever it is will try to get it back. And kill you, too. A very smart idea. I don't think. 
A very smart idea, I hope. You got a match? You bet you my boots. Oh, waterproof matchbox, huh? A good lumber yak is never without dry matches. They come mighty handy when you get one of them accident duckings in the river. Yeah. Now I keep it. I got plenty rifle shells to make another. Well, thanks, Olaf. You're wanted at the office. Oh, I'll go right over. Thanks. doing here? My uh, hand has been bothering me. I've been waiting to see you. What's the trouble? Can't you keep it from going through my desk? You know, sometimes I think you don't like me. And then at other times, I'm sure of it. This is one of those times. Uh, just what is it you were going to do with whatever it was you found out while you were waiting? Oh, this paper was well, dropped on the floor. I only picked it up. Picking up information about our business. Taking quite an interest, aren't you, Mr. Gordon? No more than any good... Yes. I'm not playing any game. I only want to help you. The only help I need is getting the timber out in time. All right, then. Give me an axe and give me something to do. All I've been doing around here is giving blood transfusions to mosquitoes. All right. You're so anxious to help. I'll keep you busy. <laughs> See? It all points to Gordon now. Well, that's true, but I... But what? A man of his education and brains doesn't cut logs for a living. He's just the type a competitor would send up here. No, he isn't. They wouldn't send anyone so unlikely to be hired or kept. He's only a dumb tenderfoot. A tenderfoot, all right. But not so dumb. Who, oh, me? Yes, you. Uh, sit down, Gordon. We were just talking about the dynamite explosion. And this time, we want the truth about it. What makes you think I'd set up a truckload of dynamite? You're just the type who'd smoke in a powder house and leave the ashes behind you. Say, Bonds, are you trying to pin this explosion on me? Or are you interested in what really happened? You mean that yarn of yours about a rifle bullet setting it off? A shock of any kind is liable to set it off. Even a child knows that. So do I. But when you expect me to swallow a mysterious horseman on top of that, it's ridiculous. Well, you must admit, Gordon, your story is very hard to believe without proof. What do you want me to do, show you the bullet? Well, I'm not unreasonable when I think you should have something more than your word to back up what you say. Maybe I have something to back up what I said. You mean you found this where that shot was fired? Yeah. Could that be traced to the gun that fired it? Yes. Every firing pin leaves a different mark. An expert could trace this to the gun that fired it. And to the man who fired it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, it looks as though we've finally gotten some evidence. I'll turn this over to the sheriff. No, I'll hang on to it. Then I can positively identify it. Yes, that's important. But suppose you were to lose it, or something happened to you. Say, that is a consideration. Around this camp, murder is likely to happen to anybody. No, wait. Suppose something happens to you. I'll tell you what. In case I have an accident, you'll find this hidden away in a safe place. There's a knot hole above my bunk. And I'll put an identification mark in case we have to look for it. May I go now? Oh, yes. I, I'm sorry, I doubted your story. Think nothing of it. That's all, Gordon. Okay, Bonds, I accept your humble apologies for the way you've treated me. 
Good afternoon, Miss Lorimer. Conceited swellhead. Who does he think he is, anyway? Well, after all, Frank, you might have shown some appreciation when he was smart enough to find the first evidence we've had. Evidence? With a railroad jam in my hands, I haven't got time to play detective. I'm darn glad you didn't get fired, Jordan. Thanks entirely to your matchbox, my friend. Me matchbox? How come? Well, they wanted me to prove my story about the man who set off the dynamite. So I showed them this half of your shell and told them it was the cartridge he fired. Now they think it's the evidence that will lead to the murderer. I yumped and Jiminy. If that killer knows you have it, you better be mighty careful. Don't worry about me. I won't even have it. I promised to hide it in the knot hole below the speck on the wall. A clever boy. I read. That lets me out. Me too. Ah, so you're winning, Eric, eh? Come on up, sit in. No, thanks. I have promised Gordon to finish these foot mittens of it. Thanks, Tuts. <laughs> Tuts, yourself. You want to sit in, Mason? No, I'm tired. Why don't you go to bed? Well, maybe I'm not sleepy anymore. Well, I guess I'll take a hand. But you were tired, Mason. Yeah, I'm tired the way you've been winning for me lately. Let's see if you can play on the level tonight. Just for a change. New man deals. Give me one of your cigarettes, Mason. Why don't you buy your own smokes? You're not as dumb as you look. Maybe not. Give me a light, Gordon. I've got six cards here. Well, that calls for a new deal. Ray, 
Pleasure one. What are you trying to do? Make this a millionaire's game? I'm only playing my hand. Yeah, and playing it like a crooked card shark. Ever since you hit camp, I knew there was something phony about you. There's something I don't like about you, too. That chip on your shoulder. Someday you're liable to get it knocked off. And you block along with it. I like to see you try it. Boys, boys! I've got enough of this. Pass me. I'll see you. By me, I'm out. You opened it. Let me see your openers. What's the matter? You don't trust me either? No. You can see my opener. I'll play these. One card. And will you get out of here, you bad luck? Chip says you don't fill it. You're gonna bluff one time too many. I'm getting sick and tired of you. You do, eh? I raise you. Maybe you ought to throw these cards away. What are you doing? Bluffing again? I'm out. Let me see that hand. What for? You gotta show openers. You can't put that over me. You took those out of the discard. That isn't true. What? Are you calling me a liar? Say, you can't hurt that boy. It's all right, Olaf. I can take care of myself. Okay, let's have a good fight. Let's make room here. started this anyway. Ah, oh, that card shark was shitty. He was not. Mason was trying to kill young Gordon. Uh, That's enough now, Mason. 
You've all got a big day ahead of you, so turn in and let's not have any more trouble. Good morning. Why aren't you on the job? What's that, the $64 question? Well, this is no time to be funny. You know we need every man down the landslide. Don't worry, that's where they are, down there waiting for the dynamite. Which gives me a chance to talk to you alone. What about? Well, for one thing, about that cartridge case. I didn't find it anywhere near the explosion yesterday. It was a phony. But it did lead to the man responsible for your troubles. Who? Remember, you and Frank Barnes were the only ones who knew where I was going to hide that evidence. Did you tell anybody? No. Then Barnes must have told Hodge Mason. Why do you think that? Because last night, Mason went right to where it was hidden, got it, and destroyed it. And then picked a fight with me so he could plead self-defense for killing me. You may be right about Mason, but not Frank Barnes. Why, Dad gave him his start in the company. Now he wants to own it. Look, you owe big money to Barnes' friend, Mr. Adams. What happens if you can't pay it back on time? He steps in and takes over your timber holdings and your sawmill. Why, it's ridiculous to think that Frank Barnes and Mr. Adams are out to rob me. Is it? You can't deny they're in a position where one more delay in getting the logs down to the mill will give them everything you own. How do you know all this? And why are you taking such an interest in my affairs? I'm not taking any interest. I've always had it. Fifty percent. My father willed me a half interest in the H&L Lumber Company, provided I come out here and make good on my own as an ordinary lumberjack, and not as John Gordon Hamilton. Now, I suppose you want to take over the management yourself. Right. Well, where are you going? To see that the timber gets down at the mill, in spite of your trust in Mr. Barnes. Well, saddle my horse and I'll ride with you. Well, now you're talking. Operator. Operator. Planted right here, where we cleared away the landslide. So it'll look like some of the blasts failed to go off. Oh, I see. The wire's all laid out. Now you can blow that train to bits. Tell Olaf not to start the train. I'll take care of Mason. Take her down myself. Check those brakes. Okay.
Are you all right? Yes. But what are you stopping the train for? Some unfinished business out there with Barnes and Mason. I told the sheriff. He's arresting them. Good work, partner. These carved logs will save our contract. Whoa! <laughs>